As you probably guessed, this time we're going to be talking about tripods. I've set up a few here, uh, all the way from entry level to professional level. Um, we'll first be discussing the parts of the tripod and um, then on how to adjust all of these fluid heads. So when it comes to parts, the, uh, you have the legs or sticks, you have what we refer to as the spreader, and you have the head, which then also has a handle attached. Um, as you can see, the designs are slightly different. Uh, a spreader could also be on the ground with just the spikes being in there. Uh, but ultimately, uh, what the, spreader, the spreader's job is to keep the legs from sliding apart. Uh, the tripod itself has usually different stages uh, to extend it. This right here is what we refer to as baby sticks. So this is a very short one. Um, this right here is uh, what we call standard. Now this right here is relatively universal because you can get relatively low with it, but there's also another stage, a third stage on the bottom, so you could come higher up. When you do set this up though, I would recommend that you start with the strongest first and move your way towards the bottom, towards the weaker uh, uh, part of the leg. Now, all of these heads, or all of those two heads right here, are bowl mount. What that means is that they're, they're sitting in a bowl. Let me show this to you. So they're sitting right here in this bowl, and this permits to level the head. Uh, for leveling, we're using a little bubble level, which is right in here. Some heads have it illuminated, so you can press a button, the light shines, which makes it helpful. With other heads, you need a flashlight uh, to do it, so it's always good to have a flashlight on your set. So as you're setting this up, you want to set this up to the height that you want to shoot at. Uh, lots of times this will be eye level of your actor or actress and you want to set it up so one leg is under the lens and the other two legs are open towards the operator. So now I'm gonna try and level this and usually you don't have to take this uh, all the way off the bolt you just loosen this a tiny little bit and And for the leveling, so um, I just took it off to demonstrate this to you. Um, also, all of these heads uh, then have a handle attached. Now, note one thing. All of these handles have a bend. All right? Now, the point of the bend is not to point downward. The point of this bend is to point away from the operator, okay? So what you don't want to do is you don't want to mount it like this, which is, this is a very standard thing I'm seeing, and you definitely don't want to mount it like this, and I do see this sometimes too, because if you're now operating the camera, you're going to have this, you know, handle stuck in your stomach. So what you want to do is you, and this is what the spin is for, you want to rotate it away from the operator so that you can very comfortably operate it and step as close to the camera as you need. Then usually also all of them will have an extension that you can make longer or shorter as you please. But this is identical on all of those, okay? And just for, for the record, the way this mounts, this here is called a rosette. So this is how you adjust the up and down angle, just by tightening onto this rosette. So those teeth of, these, of, of this rosette will just grip in and hold that head. Sorry, hold the handle at the angle that you want. So if you, if you need to adjust it, you know, up or down, all you do is loosen it a tiny bit and then 
you know, just tighten it back in, and that's all, all you need to do. Uh, usually heads will have rosettes on both sides, so if, uh, if you're left-handed, then you can also have it on the other side. Now, uh, you may have noticed that all of these heads, the way I've set them up, are very loose. Uh, this is because I, I wanted to show you first the counterbalance. And what the counterbalance is, is a spring in the head that returns it to its center position. So if I do this right here, you can see that there is a counterbalance uh, in action. And every head, every fluid head will have this. And depending on which head it is, it's you know located at the different spots. All right, so on this Miller head now, uh, to adjust the counterbalance, the counterbalance knob is right here. You see, you've got a setting from one to four. So there is there is always some counterbalance on this head, but you know it's, it is very loose right now. And if I if I bring this all the way to four, now this would be for a much heavier camera. Now, in order to uh, do a smooth move now with it for adjusting our tilt, we are, let me loosen this counterbalance here a little bit. We are going to adjust this knob right here. You can see that it is on zero. I'm gonna bring this up to about three. And now you can see that this is much smoother to, uh, to move our tilt. And to do the same with our pan, we can also bring this up. Maybe I'll bring this up to two right here. And now both my tilt and my pan feel very smooth. Should you have a problem turning these knobs, then the problem usually is because somebody uh, did not loosen all the locks uh, it, before packing this up. So if, if you, if, if that's the case, uh, you know, and, and the head is not destroyed, which it can be, then uh, try to wiggle it. And as you're wiggling it, try and rotate that knob and see if it gets freed. So um, in order to lock on this head our tilt, our tilt lock is right here. So we lock this and now I can no longer tilt. In order to lock our pan, I can do this right here. So I lock this, now I can no longer pan my head. In order to put my plate on, let me take a little bit of that pressure off so now that I can show this to you better. In order to put our plate on, we have this lever right there, as you can see. And right now, this is the position with, with, the, with the plate locked in place. In order to release it, you need to pull on this little yellow tab and swing this over, okay? So you pull and swing it over. Let me show you how this looks on the other side. So right there, right now, the plate goes in into the front, presses on this pin, and this plate slides forward and is now gonna lock it in place. So if I pull this lever over, it charges it, front in, seat it down, and it presses down to go in place. The way this looks, on the plate right here. This is the corresponding plate for this. So all we do is we make sure we've got front to front and then the plate goes in front first and I press on the pin and that's it. Uh, it's locked in place. Now the head is ready for the camera. So in order to adjust the counterbalance, we use this knob right here. If I go all the way towards the operator, then you can see 
this is all loose and now I'm tightening this and you can see that now we have a counterbalance, right? The, depending on how heavy the camera is, the stronger I want this counterbalance to be. In order to adjust my tilt fluid pressure, I now rotate on this knob uh, towards the plus, and this will increase my fluid pressure. So, you know, the more I rotate this towards the plus, the slower it forces me to move it. And as a rule of thumb, it's always better to put more pressure on it than not enough. Not enough is one of those rookie mistakes where you get a very jittery picture because you just haven't put enough uh, pressure on there. For your tilt, uh, for your pan fluid pressure, in this particular case, the knob is right in here, so you rotate this and it will add some tilt pressure now. The more you rotate it to the right, the more tilt pressure you're going to get. Your tilt lock on this head, so that, that stops you from being able to tilt, is right here, operator side, and your pan lock on this particular head is back here. So if you lock this now, you can no longer pan. Be careful. Uh, please know that a screw, uh, you know, tightens to the right, loosens to the left, uh, or tightens clockwise, loosens counterclockwise, because uh, repeatedly uh, students have uh, unscrewed this all the way and lost that screw. This, this can actually, this one can fall out on this particular head. Now let me show you how to put the plate onto this head, which is slightly different from the others. So in this particular case, the, the way it works is the plate slides in from the back, right here. This is your locking screw. So you can, you can lock it in place, and when you want to remove it, you loosen it right there. But in order to pull it out towards the back, you also have to press in on this button. And then the plate will pull out. Let me demonstrate this to you. So the plate right here is screwed on onto this plate for the Blackmagic camera. And right here on the plate, you can actually see there's this little mark with uh, where it says where, where, where it says lens with an arrow so there's a front and a back to this so make sure that this is mounted correctly on here so now all we do is we slide this plate in from the back make sure this is unlocked slide it in from the back and now it's locked in place and now I'm just going to lock it off here and and now I can put the camera on um, once this is leveled out of course. So in order to remove the um, uh, remove this plate, I loosen this, I press this button and I pull it off. When it comes to this plate right here, this is an ENG style plate. This is the front, this is the back. You can see there is a pin right here. So the camera is going to engage in this pin or the plate that's on the camera is going to engage there. And what's gonna happen is that this triangle shape that's, or, or this V shape that's in the front, first you rest it in here and then you push it forward and it will push onto this little lever and when that gets pushed forward, this here comes in and will lock it in place. In order to remove it, you pull down on this red button, swing this up, and now it's ready to take the camera. One thing you need to watch out for is students have destroyed plates by trying to push this camera in violently 
with this being not in the charged position. So if you hit this hard enough, you will eventually ruin this plate. So always make sure before you put this camera on that this is charged. Now, in order to do this, now let me demonstrate this. So as I said, you rest it into this in this in this uh, rectangular area. Right here is this triangular piece that I was talking about that's gonna hit, you know, this lever in the front. You rest it in this area and you can actually feel that it wants to sit in there because it has these rails. It has these rails on there that actually, you know, go into these grooves. So you place this on there and then with a firm push, you push this forward. And before you let go, you always give it a wiggle to make sure that the camera is seated uh, uh, securely. And then once you're done, you just release it by pushing on this red lever and pulling this out. And now, now the camera can be securely taken out. Again, put it on there, push it forward, wiggle, make sure it's tight, pull it off, push this, and that's it. I want to make you aware of one more thing. When you are packing these tripods up, please make sure that on the heads, your pan lock is open, your tilt lock is open, and all the fluid pressure is released. So there is no tension on these heads. Uh, the reason for that is that when you are transporting them and they get bumped, the case gets bumped or the bag gets bumped, uh, you give the heads the uh, ability to move out of the way uh, as this happens. If it is locked in place, then it is potentially possible that you're going to uh, damage the head irreparably. And uh, we don't want to have that happen, especially because some of those heads are very, very expensive. So uh, please take care of them. Make sure all the locks are released and the pressure is off the fluid. With that, uh, good luck on shooting your movies. I hope this helped you out and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.